today, uh, Chad here is going to show you how to do a basic stock repair. We have a butt stock for Stevens Model 77H. It's a vintage shotgun. As far as I know, they don't really make replacement stocks. Um, yeah, I'm sure you could have a, a shop CNC one for you, you know, from scratch, but that would cost you a lot of money. In this case, this shotgun was stored in less than ideal conditions. And basically what happened here is we got a little bit of wood rot on the comb of the stock near the um, butt plate. And this wood rot is just really ugly stuff. If you let a gun sit in less than ideal conditions where you got lots of moisture going on, especially here in Georgia where this stock was stored, uh, we have very humid conditions which can cause the wood to swell. You get a lot of wood rot. So basically if you can picture this stock leaning up against something, probably down in the dirt a little bit, all that moisture just attributes to this wood rot. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to let Chad take over with a little bit of the narrating and we're going to show you some of the basic things you'll need to do this. And uh, it's pretty simple and we can bring this stock back to life. Alright, we have our basic materials here that we're going to need to do this repair. We have a product that Brownell sells. It's called Acroglass. This is the resin and then Brownells also makes the hardener. It is um, one part hardener to four parts resin by volume. You mix it up in a little cup and just take your little popsicle stick or dowel rod like I have here and just mix it up real good and you're good to go. This stuff right here is awesome. This acro glass is really nice because it's a good universal epoxy for gunsmithing. Like here we're doing a stock repair or if you want a glass bed a rifle, you know, fill in holes, cracks, what have you. So I'm going to let Chad take over and we're going to go ahead and get this process started and we're going to get this uh, puppy rolling. Let's see, you got your bad spot right there. What you're going to want to do is pretty much trim it out just to the minimal amount that you need really. And I've kind of got it marked off here just a little bit. But you can use a hand saw or a power saw or anything you want to try to cut this little part out but you need to do it evenly as possible. And after that, what you do is you try to find a piece of wood that's going to match up. And we, here we have just a little chunk of walnut. And uh, if you want to do just a quick repair, you know, you're not trying to match the grain up or anything, you can just cut a chunk out and then glue it in place like we're going to do in just a few minutes. Or you can actually take the time to try to find a grain pattern that matches up better with the stock to blend it in, you know, where it's less noticeable. But a big repair like this, I mean, you know, good eye is going to notice it whether you do it that way or not. But anyways, we're just going to cut a little chunk out of here cut this piece right here off and then show you the process of how to fit it in place and secure it down and then acroglass it and clamp it and then let it dry for 24 hours. One thing that I want to uh, mention too while I've got the camera rolling is that this with this acroglass one of the things that you can do like Chad said you're going to be matching up the grain of the stock with this grain of this chunk of walnut. When you cut both this stock and this piece of walnut you can use your leftover sawdust to mix in with the acro glass and it'll match the color up a little bit. Uh, when you're filling in holes and things or you know like if you got a big gouge and it's not big enough to actually cut a chunk to glue in there you just want to fill it you could use acro glass if you had enough um, sawdust that matched the color you could use acro glass to fill it and it would, it would look pretty decent. I think that looks good. Okay. This is the only saw available at the moment. I don't have my proper tools, so this will have to suffice. But you basically want to use a hand tool doing this, right, to have the most control? Yeah, I mean, you can use a, you know, you can use a, uh, um, like a stationary saw or something if you want, or a band saw, but you got more control over it if you use something in your hand. Now what's the proper term for the saw you're talking about? Um, it's not a coping saw, it's a, uh, it's kind of like a jam saw but it's a finer blade. It's basically just small and light and gives you a lot of control over what you're doing, right? Yeah, it's just a flexible blade that's real light and real thin. Uh, the term escapes me at the moment. 
We'll post the information in the video. So basically the idea is that no matter what you use, the idea is to be slow and methodical. Very much so. Gotcha. Measure twice, cut once. Yep. Look like uh, the angle you got there is turning out nice that you're wanting. Yeah, it's just cutting off that minimal amount, you know. Yeah, you can always score it down if it's too big, but you can't put it back on as easy. I guarantee you there's going to be people that see this and they're going like, you're cutting a gun stock, what are you doing? <laughs> Spare parts. You know, really, in retrospect, the uh, the finish on that stock isn't bad. No, it's not at all. I mean, it's aged nicely. It's just that one spot you got some wood rot, and it's just not pretty. But the rest of it, it's got a you know, it doesn't look bad in, in the big scheme of things. Yeah, not too bad at all. For what it is, I mean, that shotgun's probably at least probably 20 or 30 years old. Yeah, it'll refinish nice once everything's said and done. Yeah, we got a good cut of wood to work with. Pretty much. And see if you're wanting to um, to add the sawdust to the acro glass. This is the point where you'd want to try to capture some of that dust. But I think the way that he matched up the color and the grain of the wood is going to work out nicely. she blows. That's what she said. <laughs> all right, so we got a sanding block set up. Keep all the edges even and square. See, it's taking some of those little rough ridges down. Yeah. And if, you, if you were to use the proper tool to begin with, you wouldn't have to worry about that as much, I should say. But since I had a hacksaw to work with, this is the best that we got. Well, it's good that we're showing worst case scenario, though. I mean, got a lot of garage gunsmiths and do it yourself gunsmiths on YouTube, and that's pretty much what we're tailored towards, you know. We're all average people, you know. We don't do this uh, professionally, so to speak, uh, but we do dabble quite a bit, don't we? We do. <laughs> How many stocks do you have uh, that you're refinishing right now? About four? <laughs> At least. Need to get them knocked out. I know, I got about four guns sitting in here right now I need to get out the door. You know, that's good that you didn't um, end up having to cut into the cavity that the hole is in, so now redrilling that will be a lot easier. You may not even have to worry about it at all. You don't have to. You see, I'm going to sink some pins in to this area right here, and then right here. And that'll help hold this piece in place. You sure. Aquaglass would work pretty good for it, but since it's on the end, you want to pin it in place just to make sure that it's a little bit more stable. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> Show you how to do all that. And also, by the way, I will be doing a couple of uh, simple repairs on the trigger group of this shotgun, and I'll uh, I'll show those on here too. Now, this type of repair that you're doing on this stock. 
you could very well do the same type of thing on a piece of furniture or any other wood object, right? Yeah, pretty pretty much, much the same principle applies. Yeah, I mean, just patching. You know, this is how they did arsenal, um, arsenal repairs, you know, on like old Mosin and Gaunts and stuff like that, old military rifles. They would just cut out the section that they needed, find a piece of wood that would fit, fit it, stick it in place. They didn't give a rat's ass whether it matched up or not. They just wanted to fix it and get it back out the door. Exactly. But we're going for aesthetics here, so. Absolutely. Well, I know I've got a couple of uh, Mosins myself that, uh, exhibit very hasty stock repairs uh, but I'm, I'm assuming that when a soldier needs a rifle you got to get it back out the door as soon as possible you know as long as it holds together and works that's really all that matters mm -hmm. function over uh, aesthetics of course well at this point we've got this pretty much squared off you know you're just going to take your block of wood set it in place and pretty much just kind of mark off where you're going to need to cut it at. And you can trim it down accordingly so you've got less to take off later on after it's glued down. Just kind of cut it at a little bit of an angle. But uh, this is pretty much it. You just get your block, cut it down to size a little bit, but you want to leave some extra. See, this is about the profile of the stock right here, but you want to leave a little bit of extra on there so you can take it down and get it evened out real nice and flush with the rest of the stock that way you can blend it together way it'll be less noticeable than um, than any other kind of repair or just wood filler or something like that but this is a much better method than using wood filler you can fill in this whole spot anyways we're going to chop this off and cut down a little bit and we'll glue it in place and let it sit up okay so now we got our piece of wood cut down to size what we can do is trim this down at an angle right here trim this down a little bit of an angle it's less to have to take off later on down the road but what I use for this is a wood rasp makes the process go a little bit faster than sandpaper if you sanded this it would take you all day but anyways what we're going to do is um, mark it off here and we're going to put a couple of holes in the stock here and then corresponding holes right here just a little bit larger than say um, you can use like a piece of clothes or a piece of clothes hanger or uh, any kind of little metal rod or anything like that that you've got laying around. I've got a metal rod that's ideal. Okay. But you can just use that, cut you some short little sections, and use those holes to put those pins in, and then you pretty much pin this block in place, and you acker glass it. You know, you create pretty much like a mechanical lock, and uh, that just helps hold this piece in place and gives it a stronger bond, you know, entirely to the entire or to the other stock here. But uh, we're going to chop this down and get these holes drilled out, pins put in place, and acroglass it, and get her wrapped up and let her dry. A little trick you can do to make sure your holes match up on um, the stock and your repair piece is use like some wet paint. You know, this is a little super black pen, but it's wet enough. Just let that get on there, and then you can put your piece in place. and it'll transfer your dots over. So now you know exactly where to drill your holes in both pieces. That way it matches up, goes together. We're just gonna trim this down right here on this bandsaw. Hell, a lot easier than using the hacksaw. What do you think? Absolutely. Or a table saw. Too small for that. If you wanna keep your fingers. Saves you a lot of uh, work with the rasp, at least. Not exactly the safest way to go about it, but it works.
You want to make these holes a little bit bigger than your uh, rod that you're going to use to fill it in. You can fill these holes in with acro glass, put that rod in there, and it'll be just as solid as anything else. They don't need to be very deep either, depending on what you got to work with, you know, you can just do them about three eighths of an inch, if that. Just kind of wallow them out a little bit. Just make sure they don't interfere with any kind of screw holes, like this hole right here for the back of the stock. You know, for the butt plate, you don't want it to interfere with that at all. <laughs> okay, now you got that drilled. Now you're going to drill out these. Now this piece we have clamped uh, directly into the vise just because we're going to rasp it down and sand it down anyway, so it doesn't matter if we mar it. Just in case you're wondering. Make sure you don't go too deep on this, depending on your stock repair piece. You don't want to go all the way through, and then you're going to have another hole to fill. Just enough to matter. Just wall on that a little bit. And there you go. Alright, so that one needs, I need to cut another, a longer one out. Yeah, cut two longer ones out. Alright, two, two longer ones? Yep, yeah, two longer ones. Alright. Where's that magnet thing? Right there, kind of about three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch it is. Drink with your gypstick, damn it. Got some little pins cut to size. Stick them down them holes there. You got your other holes cut. Then you just check for a fit. And there you go, it fits together. So after this, you can just take some acro glass, slap it down in these holes here, put these pins back in place, slap some in here, all over this area right here, all over here, and then put them together, clamp them down, and you're good to go. Just let it dry. We'll show you that. Something I forgot to mention before you do your acro glass is uh, you want to score up the two areas that you're going to be gluing together. And this will help the uh, acro glass kind of grip the wood a little bit better. All you got to do is just score it lightly. It's nothing, doesn't need to be anything real fancy. Um, I know you just sanded this down and everything, but sanding it was just to make sure that the surface was level and square. All this is for is just to Make sure the acro glass can get in there and grip the wood on both sides. So, just one last little nitpicky thing I just need to mention that I'd forgotten about. All right then. All right, we're gonna mix up our acro glass. You take the resin, and it's one part hardener to four parts resin. And you know you can buy the little measuring cups and everything, but I just eyeball it. I just. Fill the bottom there, okay. And then I just do about a quarter of the bottom as hardener. And you wind up with something that looks about like that. About one to four parts. And you take your mixing stick, popsicle stick or dowel rod, whatever you want to do, and you mix this stuff for two minutes, constantly stirring for two minutes. As per the instructions. And we're going to get the complete two minutes of stirring on tape. Okay, now I'm just kind of fitting some macro glass in here. Trying to get it all down in this little hole here. You just kind of plug a bit in there and just push it on down with the pin. Yep, that's about it. You just kind of try to get it all over this pin here. Try to fill up that hole pretty good. Oh, yeah. And once this star, uh, stuff hardens, it's some pretty stout stuff. Oh yeah, no doubt. That's fine looking work, Trip.
I just want to take some surgical tubing and then you just kind of wrap it on here. What this does is just help hold this piece in place really tight and real well. And the surgical tubing is good because you can wrap it around pretty much anything, you know. You can do any kind of stock repair or anything like that, whereas a regular wood clamp or like a quick clamp or something like that just wouldn't work, you know. It seems like that surgical tubing is nice too because you can kind of contour it in different directions and different, you know, tensions too. Oh yeah. And you just put a little knot in there like that there. And just double check everything. Okay, everything's set up well. Now you just wait. Let All it right. Sit. We're going to let this guy sit up and then uh, we'll move on to some other things with this particular stock repair. Uh, and bear in mind, this is going to be a pretty long video, so uh, bear with us here.